Hello everyone. Welcome to part two of our active learning series. And today's session is on making Google Slides that are accessible to all students. And when we think about accessibility, we have a number of themes that we want to display. Uh, first is when creating content, we want to do less text and we want to incorporate more video and audio as more text creates cognitive load, which is essentially uh, too much information for us to process at once. And the second theme is, is that we want to make sure that our audio and video that we're adding into our Google Slides can be used during our synchronous live lessons, whether we are in person or online, or for example, uh, asynchronously for students to access via a link in Canvas, an email, or that type of thing. So if you look here, if you want to watch this on your own, there's a video on introduction to digital accessibility. And also there's instructions here, which is embedded audio, which you're going to learn how to do in a few minutes. And then what I would like you to do is you're following along on this video is click on file here on this slideshow and then make a copy of this entire presentation. Make a copy because you're going to be asked a number of times to pause this video and complete a task. So let's talk first about adding audio to Google Slides. And really, there's two ways of doing it, and I'm going to focus on adding Moat Audio, which is an extension. But I've also, on this slideshow, have added recording audio on Windows using the audio recorder, which can be found on your settings here. And you can type in audio recorder and record a audio recording via this. But I feel like for your uses in instruction and creating these, Moat is a much more effective and efficient process so what you can see here in and i'm going to demonstrate moat before i show you how to obtain it is is that moat allows you to record directions um, it allows you to provide feedback to students and it can be used all throughout the google workspace not only in slides but on docs sheets draw etc really essentially anywhere you can um, utilize in Google Workspace. So there's two ways of doing it. So once you've downloaded the extension, I'm going to take you through that in a moment. All you need to do is say, for example, you wanted to leave a comment or an audio recording for your students. Highlight the text, right click and click on comment. And then once your extension has been downloaded, you have Moat and it allows you to record that audio recording for 30 seconds, that bite-sized recording for your students to listen to directions, feedback, content, whatever you'd like. And then once it's done, your students can then see the comment and click play. Or once it's in your Google Slides and embedded, you can click on the moat icon, which is on your Google Slides, which will be there when it's been installed and embedded. You click there and record your audio. Here are the instructions for this assignment. And then it's going to process. I'm going to click insert. And you're going to see an audio icon appear on the far left hand side that I can move anywhere but on my Google slide by just holding the left clicker on my mouse and dropping it wherever I want. And once you drop it somewhere, your, your students can then click on it and then click on that audio recording and listen to that audio recording. So that's a really powerful way of adding audio to your Google Slides to make it very accessible for your students. You can provide that the text instructions, but you can also provide the audio instructions so they can be listening and reading the 
instructions or task at the same time. So to get Moat, you need to go to the Google Extension Store and there's a hyperlink on slide number four, which I'm on right now. You click on that. And then you will say add to Google Chrome and then it will prompt you on a number of these items. What I suggest is allowing everything and allowing it to be incorporated into your Google Chrome and then exiting out of your Chrome so that it will appear on your Chrome. And once you reopen your Chrome, be sure to click on the extension puzzle piece on the far right hand side of your screen where my icon is and make sure it's pinned. Click on the pin and make sure it's highlighted and then it will appear up at the very top and you can click on it there. And what's cool about when we're looking at moat right here is, is that you can look at your recent moats and you can utilize them really essentially anywhere you would like on your anywhere on the Google workspace. So you can incorporate those as you wish. So once you have moat, I would like you on this slide right here to add a comment using moat. And then I would like you to then use the icon here to record something and place it on this slideshow. So first you'll right click, add a comment and then record. And then you're going to record also by clicking that mode icon at the top of your screen on your Google Slides. Then once you're done, we're going to move on to our next activity, which is adding video to Google Slides. And there's multiple ways of doing so. So the first way of doing it, you're going to click on insert and then click on video and you can search for YouTube videos or if you already have the YouTube URL, you can do it that way or you can click on your Google Drive and add it that way as well into the slideshow and it'll automatically be integrated. And what's cool is, is that say, for example, you want to add a YouTube video and I'm going to go back to YouTube and I'm just going to search basketball today and say, I just want to incorporate this video here. I'm going to click select and I'm going to drop it in. But what's really cool is that you can on the far right hand side, determine when you want that video to start by putting in the minutes. So if I want to start this video at five minutes and end it at eight minutes, it will allow me to do that. And so when students click on play in the slides, it will start at that time for my students. So that's how you add video using the insert button. Now I'm going to talk about Loom, which, it, which I'm already using to record this screencast. So all you have to do is add the extension of Loom to your Google Slides, and it's the same thing that you're going to be doing with Moat, same process, and you'll add it and then make sure it's pinned on your extension toolbar at the very top right hand side of your screen. And then what you'll do is you'll click on this icon here. And what will happen is, is that it will ask you to screen record whatever you are looking at on your current internet browser. And what I'm going to show you right now is when I go to loom.com, it's going to bring up all my videos. And let me just show you just a recent video that I got right here. Uh, this is the most recent video that I created. And what you can do is if you click on the video in your library, what you can do what you can do is hyperlink it 
and I'll just choose this one right here. You can see there's a hyperlink icon here. If you click there, you can develop a link that is sent directly to whatever document or slide or whatever you would like to do uh, the work on and incorporate the screencast. So it's really easy by clicking that link icon and then moving that forward to whatever uh, platform you're going to utilize that link. So I'm going to copy that link here and say I wanted to go to the Google Slideshow page where I want to incorporate that hyperlink. So say I want my students to watch a video here. I'm going to right click, click on the link, and then I'm going to put in that link for Loom. And that will take them directly to that Loom of that screencast. And what's great about Loom is that you can, you know, see when students view that screencast and you can get views. So when you look on that video, you can determine how many views you have. And then sometimes it will email you directly when students are viewing that video that you've uploaded. So spend some time here on this slide here on your turn. Add a video from YouTube or your Google Drive, and then create your own screencast using Loom. So pause the video here and spend time doing that now. Next, let's talk about creating hyperslides. Just a really quick review from the other previous um, professional learning opportunity that we had. And in order to do so, all you need to do for agendas, so say this is our agenda page, this is the first thing you would like your students to do, second thing you want students to do, and then the third thing, all you need to do is highlight, click on link, and then we can determine which slide by searching, let's see, so we wanted to review creating hyperslides, which is slide 10. We type in slide number 10, creating hyperslides. Click here and it automatically adds the link here. And to do it again, I'm gonna do it for the Freire vocabulary, which we're gonna go over in a moment. You highlight, right click, click on link, and then type in the slide number. I'm gonna type in slide and then it's going to go right there. And it, take this time now to pause this video and hyperlink the remaining slides. So on your copy, you probably don't have hyperlinks for two, three, or four, so please do that now. Now let's talk about a strategy called Frere Vocabulary, which is a great interactive strategy that you can do with your students live synchronously online or in person, or they can be doing this asynchronously. So what it looks like is that if you have a template, template like this, you put the vocabulary word in the middle and what you do is you create a copy of this slide for all of your groups in your classroom or individually for each student. Um, and it can be deployed either by clicking on share and changing your slides from view to everyone on the internet to editor. And what you can do is copy this link here and put it into your Zoom or onto your Canvas page and your students can access that slideshow and edit it. So what's really cool is, is that you can have a number of vocabulary terms and you could have uh, students uh, in groups of two to four students. And the goal is for each student to provide a definition of that word, an illustration, image, meme, etc., of that term a video that discusses that term and then use uh, this term in a sentence. So there's a variety of different tasks here, which are 
really defining the word and illustrating that word in multiple modalities. So this is a great strategy that you can utilize with your students and you can copy this template and put it onto your own slideshow by clicking on copy and then pasting it into a new slideshow. You can also, for example, if you use Canvas, you can create a slideshow of, you know, 10 vocabulary words and then assign it on Canvas as an assignment for each student. And each student will have to go through this and complete each of the words. What I suggest to do when you're introducing this strategy to your students is to show them by going over the first word that you're going to have them do. Just do it together as a class and show them how to do it on Google Slides. Show them how to insert the image, how to insert that video so that the students understand those procedures. And this is going to probably take two to three times without having any kinks or any roadblocks with any of the students. Just need to complete, you know, you know, repeat the modeling and then the instructions and students will tend to get this over time as it becomes more of a routine task or assignment you provide your students. So take this opportunity, create your own Frere vocabulary uh, presentation. You can either make a copy and just add that slide, this slide here to a new presentation, or you can make a copy and paste it here and and then add your own vocabulary words. So I'm gonna just copy this slide and then I'm gonna paste it. Or you can click on duplicate if you want to use it for this particular slideshow. But I really highly recommend using this strategy. And then on our ETCN website, there's a variety of different templates that you can do use on the Google Workspace that is Frayer Vocabulary. So if you click on where it says Frayer Vocabulary, there's a template there for you to use um, outside of the one that I provided you in this presentation. And then um, as you get down to the bottom here, please just tell me in this form, provide us with some feedback as we'd just love to hear, you know, how this is working for you or you know, not working for you and we can seek improvement, but we really do appreciate you taking the time to walk through this, uh, take the time to learn about integrating these tools and strategies, and hopefully we will see these in your classroom in the future. So thank you so much. Be sure to check out our ETCN uh, EdTech website as I just showed you. There's so many good resources that you can use as well as professional learning that you can um, take advantage of. Thank you so much, everyone, and have an amazing day.